My name is Edgar Rodriguez, and today I'm going to be talking about a video that I saw online. And um, I don't like to talk about this type of things. I don't like to go out and search for people with fake service dogs and then bring them out on YouTube. Uh, and then calling people outside, see somebody at the store with a fake service dogs and tell them that they have a serv uh, fake service dog. I don't like to do that and because... I think it don't help at all. It don't make any difference. People will still do it. But what I really want is to educate uh, handlers who have service dogs like I do to do the things the right way. And this video really caught my attention, not only because the handler was not doing what it's supposed to do, and this lady didn't know what she was doing, but more than anything, I, would, I want to talk about this video because the employee was the one who really, really knows the law. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Like I said, I don't like to talk about um, fake service dogs. I don't like to go into stores and point people, hey, that's a fake service dog, or call the manager, or do all these things. If I see a fake uh, service dog, all I do is change aisle, go to another area of the store, uh, try not to get in contact with that person or get close to that person because none of this thing's gonna make a difference. We as a handlers, we are the one who really gonna make the difference. We can't expect fake service dogs, uh, which is almost, it's almost no, it's actually a crime. I, we can't expect criminals to obey the law. So we as, handlers we need to know the law we need to obey the law and do the things the right way in this case this particular video this lady is mentioning uh, i'm going here to my notes i'm sorry i'm looking down uh she's mentioning several times that she has a uh service dog's id a registration that she registered her service dog in ussdr.org i found out i find that website and when there, and this is not nothing else more than one of those um, schemes where they sell you for ninety nine dollars or whatever amount a certificate, an ID, a best, a whole thing, and you can turn any dog into a service dog. And she mentioned that she was this her dog was registered in U.S. U.S. SDR at least seven times and she keep going back to that here right there you know this individual doesn't know what she's doing and if she has a real service dog she should know and I'm not saying she don't have a, a real service dog maybe she do and she just is ignorant to the whole service dog's law and how she's protected and why she's protected so let's not judge uh, her and saying that she has a f fake service dog. Let's talk about what was wrong in this video So I'm gonna play the videos for you now, and then we're gonna talk about it uh, by step by step Let's stop the video right there. And she said the dog is trained, uh, she's happy PTSD, and the dog is trained to offer her uh, emotional support. Immediately, that is wrong. It's an emotional support dog is not a service dog. And if your dog, what your dog does is to provide you with emotional support, and then you are not protected by the law and by ADA. So this is immediately right there, something is wrong. And I love this employee because he really knows the law and he has a law in his hand. And I do have a right for psychiatric reasons to have her registered as a service dog. But a service dog is trained to do a specific act, i.e. it senses an anxiety attack and licks your cheek. Okay, Just and that's what I told you, I told you I have to she has the right to have a registered service dog because she has PTSD. 
um, please let me know where in the law you have to have a registered service dog. Where the law tell you it needs to be registered and where. There's no social thing. So she don't know what she's talking about and he knows. And this is embarrassing. Um, if you are a service dog handler and you have a service dog, I expect you to know your rights. I need to expect you to know what you can do, where you can go without interfering with all those people's rights. Because this is my belief. Your rights start where the, the other person's rights finish. So you have to respect all those people's rights too. Because everybody has rights. So don't tell me because you have an emotional support dog and that's your right that you can invade all those people's rights not to have a dog if it's not necessary in a public place. Okay, she is. She went through 120 hours of training, and that's how I have her registered through that USSDR. I explained to you what specific actions for her to train. She provides emotional support. I'm saying what I'm showing you. She has a service on this. I'm showing you she is registered with the USSDR. I brought her in here before. I have PTSD. It's on file. She's went through 100. Her emotional support. She's not an emotional support dog. I told you what she provides is emotional support. I told you what she provides is emotional support. She provides emotional support, but she's not an emotional support dog. She provides an emotional support, but she's not an emotional support dog. I mean, what is what is it? If it's not a emotional support dog and provides emotional support, what is that? She is a registered service dog with the USSDR. I have her card right here to prove it. The dog must be trained to take She's went through 120 hours of training. That's how she's registered with the USSDR. Let me finish this, okay? Okay. To train, to take a specific action when needed to assist the person with a disability, i.e., a person with disabilities has dogs who alert him when the blood sugar reaches high to the level. A person with depression may have a dog that's trained to remind her to take medication. With epilepsy, maybe trained to check the onset of the seizure. Epilepsy. Okay. okay. But, no, what she is trained for is emotional support. That's not. Because I have PTSD. I am allowed to have her registered because of psychiatric reasons. I don't know why she says she's about to have it registered. Because of psychiatric reasons. Because of psychiatric reasons. She's about to have a register. Now she is getting to another different thing. I don't know. She's getting confused. Uh, a minute ago she was registered and she can prove it was registered. Now she's about to register her. Um, she was trained to offer emotional support. Um, I mean, you can have a cat offering you emotional support. You can have a she can offer you emotional support. I mean, you can have a rock that actually offer you emotional support. I mean, I'm not being disrespectful for people who need emotional support, and I don't. That's not what I'm trying to do here. But, but you have to understand, emotional support is the company of the animal is giving you relief from PTSD in her case, like she is pressed right here. Or for any psycho, uh, for a lot of uh, psychiatric situations, you need an emotional support animal that will help you, and they do great job. But it, they don't have the same rights. You can't go to the restaurants with a um, emotional support dog. It needs to be a service dog. It needs to be an animal that is off is helping you live a better life that's giving you freedom because that's how i see my dog give me freedom to do things that i want to do without being afraid of something bad happening because he's there to let me know before it happens so it's not the same thing please it's not the same thing let's be knowledgeable if you have a service dog you should know the law and for me this lady without accusing her it sounds to me that's not a real service dog by any meaning by any mean 
and I, I'm not gonna say she don't have a PTSD and she's trying to have a fake service dog, but what I definitely know, she is trying to get her, her emotional support dog into a place where only service dogs are allowed. And she has went through the 120 hours of training. That's how she's registered with USSDR. You a full-fledged ADA. Another thing here, right here, USSDR, whatever the website she got there, they don't require you to register a dog with 120 hours of training. You can, yes, register the dog and pay your money and get a best, get an ID and get a certificate. And actually the certificate is really nice. If you, I don't know if you've seen it, they sell on Amazon too and they show you a picture. So you can go and see the, 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 the certificate, how beautiful it is. So yes, they don't ask you for 120 hours of training. So again, what she's referring that because because before she registered the dog into USS whatever they are, um, she had 120 hours of training. It don't make any sense to me either. Service animal goes through way more than 120 hours. They go through 120 hours, hours of no, training. Not a service animal, no, man. Okay. I'm ignorant. Okay. Sure, I, 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 I don't want to be the law. You're ignorant. That's you not the law. You're, you're breaking. You you got a disability. Okay. You're breaking the law. No, I'm not. You are breaking the law. Not. Okay. You haven't told me what specific. I have told you. You don't even specific. have the right to ask me what my disability is. That's I against the law. He never asked her what her disability is. He never did that. He was clear of the two questions that he can ask. And he was doing those two, asking those two questions. He was not asking what, what her disability. She was the one who offered her disability. She was the one who said, I have PTSD. So she's telling him he, her disability, he's not asking her. He knows the law really well and he has a copy of it. For you. Yes, you did. You asked me what I she's registered for. I have to tell me what okay, sir. Are you going to allow me to take my registered service dog? I'm not allowing. To I love this part when he says now, um, because you're recording this, I'm not allowing a emotional support dog come in. She's not emotional support. I am not allowing you She has tags. She has a card. You're recording it. I am not allowing an emotional support. She is a service dog. She is a USSDR registered service dog. Okay, then you need to give me my you need to give me my money back for what I paid for. Okay. Give me my money back. Do you have your tickets with you? I will take them down there. They, she still has them. She has a tag, she has a best, she has a certificate, she's a service dog. Hmm, that sounds weird. Um, having a tag, having a, a um, sorry, registration or whatever you have, it doesn't make your dog a service dog. Uh, this lady definitely didn't know what she's talking about and she encountered the best employee I ever seen in my life. I mean, I wish every employee in every company was as knowledgeable as this guy and has the law in his hand that he has it. It would save us so much trouble. It would save us so much talking and explaining and educating because they already know. I haven't had the bad luck to go places and be stopped by anybody. Actually, one time was one restaurant when I, when I went in, <clears throat> the guy who was helping me immediately he says, uh, dogs are not allowed. I said, this is a service dog. And he said, and uh, he said, it don't matter. Uh, dogs are not allowed. And I, I, I asked, I told him, hey, do you know what you're doing right now is, is breaking the law? And he, his answer was, oh, do you know bringing a dog to a restaurant is breaking the law? Before this went any, any more conversation here, the manager appear from nowhere she jumps from nowhere i don't know where she came from she talked to me directly hey how you doing sir uh how can we help you where do you like to sit she walked me to my table find me the table that i wanted to sit in and she was super polite and this stuff right there definitely this employee was not knowledgeable about it and um i imagine she went back and explained him what was going on and if it happens again i didn't see this happen but I, this is my guess because the way she react 
And then anywhere else that I go with my dog, I ever, ever had somebody stop me and don't let me go with my dog. I fly with my dog. Uh, I use Spirit. I use American Airlines. Never even have questions asked about my dog. I've been in different hotels. Never have a question asked about my dog. Um, I, I never had any issues with my service dog. Other than that, um, that guy once. And, and, and that's it. But my dogs behave as a service dog. It doesn't behave like an emotional support dog or like a fake dog. It behaves like a service dog. And I think that helps. Um, that I never have anybody ask me any. I don't remember anybody except this guy. He was uh, that I said in the restaurant. I mean, definitely he didn't know uh, what was going on. And I had to we kind of start the conversation there. But, um, but that was it. So if you have a service dog and before i did this video i was i, I was arguing, talking about this with somebody else and we said well <clears throat> do you you don't need to know the law to have a service dog you need to know the law please if you gonna get a service dog today if you are training your service dog if you are in the process of getting one or you already have a service dog please Learn the law, know every step. You're not going to memorize it by head. You could try. You want to know your rights. You want to know all the people's rights. You you don't want to inflict in all the people's space without knowing if you're doing the right thing. So please get knowledgeable about it. You have a, you are a team. Your dog is doing for you a big work. You, the minimum you can do is to know the law to protect yourself, to protect the rights of your dog, and don't be mistreated in places like this. So I hope this helped. I don't like talking about videos and uh, pointing fingers to fake dogs and things like that. I don't think that helps at all. What I know for sure helps is if you know the law. If you, as a handler, you know the law, that will make a difference because we're gonna behave as a knowledgeable, individual that has a service dog and when we talk we know what we're talking about and we can educate all the people and when we go to places we can educate the employees but if you like I'm doing right now all I'm trying to do is bringing awareness out to the uh, family of service dogs uh, handlers so again I will see you soon I um, I'm working on some videos to do the CGC, all the exercises in the CGC, um, regular CGC and CGCA, CGCU, which I think, like I said in one of my videos, is a great idea uh, to have it, not because you need it, not because you can show certifications to anybody, but because it helps you prove your training and get, become a better trainer of your service dog and become a better handler all around. So I'll see you the next time.